Welcome uh, to our conference uh, after Q3 results. Today with us, uh, there is a CEO of Eco Investment, Niklas Lindberg, uh, Maciej Drost, a CFO, and the new board member responsible for residential sector, Waldek Olbrick. They will uh, uh, deliver today conference, and uh, later they will ask, answer uh, all your questions. Um, Niklas, the stage is yours. So, welcome to this uh, Q3 report from Echo Investment. We're going to present for you today the diff six di seven different stages. Here. The seventh one is the appendixes that we started with in the last quarter. It's going to be Q3 in brief, read uh, done by Mache, destinations um, done by me, business segment about residential done by Valdek, our new board member responsible for residential, and I will do the offices and residential. Uh, retail. I will also talk about the recent, recent acquisitions, the echo values, and then in the end, Marcia will take you through the financial highlights of his quarter. <coughs> what you see also here is that now we have extended the board with two more members that we did during this quarter, which is Valdek and Mart Mikolai Martinuska, that are taking care of land investment and divestment and Valdec running the residential part of our business. So now the board is really full, and it's, we're covering all the different segments of our business, and we are now continuing the growth strategy of the company. Masha will now take you through the Q3 figures and the highlights that we want to address. Good morning. Uh, so let's look at, at the Q3 results. Uh, first, the, the numbers, uh, looking at <coughs> just you know, the, the quarter, um, you, you can see it's, it's very similar to the uh, third quarter of 2016. And uh, just to remind everybody, in 2016, first two quarters, we still had a yielding portfolio that was sold on June 1, uh, in a, a portfolio transaction. So first two quarters are really not comparable and of course also cumulative numbers are not really comparable year on year. But if you look at just you know the third quarter, then in 2016 it was already without yielding assets. So it was, uh, you know, it's, it's really like, like to like. You can see that operating revenue is, is very similar. Um, operating profit is slightly low, but gross profit is higher. Uh, Net is slightly lower, but this is mainly, oh, I would say, only effect of, of um, taxation, meaning you know deferred tax provision being released in 2016. So uh, it, it's very similar. It's um, uh, we believe these are good results, and I will uh, explain you um, in in a moment why, and mainly because they have uh, you, you can you can you will be able to clearly see that we have a very good basis. Uh, to fulfill, you know, um, our targets for the entire year 2017. So, looking at what happened in 2000, um, in in third quarter of 2017, um, you can see that we handed over, we signed final sale agreements of 238 apartments, which is uh, not a high number compared to annual target. Uh, but as I said, we are on a very good uh, good path. Uh, to meet our targets, and I will cover that in a, in a moment. Uh, we revalued our uh, commercial projects as expected, so I think these are all familiar names, starting from Galeria Libero, uh, shopping center, and a number of office projects that are near completion. Uh, we earned uh, a development um, a fee for uh, completion of extension of Outlet Park uh, in Szczecin, that's a project done for EPP, uh, we got um, a compensation for uh, Q22 for additional leasing. Uh, we are earning remuneration for the uh, Tovarova 22 uh, management and we received dividend from EPP. So all of that was as expected and nothing unusual. Uh, let's look at what I you know, mentioned, which is uh, you know, what happened and what will still happen in Q4, because as I said, we have a very good basis to meet our 
annual targets. Um, so uh, the first the first line is already you know telling a lot. We handed over around 400 apartments in three quarters, and uh, we are aiming to uh, to sign final sale agreements for over 500 apartments in Q4. Uh, and Valdek, you know, will tell you what's going on. We believe it's extremely impressive uh, result for the full year. Uh, final valuation and sale, we sold one project uh, in the first part of the year, in the first three quarters. We are preparing to sell two projects uh, in December. Uh, we did value a number of projects and we will continue to do that. So, uh, you know, this should be expected to continue as it happened in the first three quarters. Uh, we recorded a gain on EPP shares, and of course we continue to value, the, to, to value them at fair market value. Uh, we received dividend from EPP uh, twice uh, in April and, and September, so that's not expected to happen in Q4. Uh, we did earn a development earnout, as I mentioned, for Outlet Park Extension, which is a small project, and we will earn, um, or actually we already earned in Q4 because the project was opened, development uh, earnout for uh, Szczecin Galaxy project, which is a few times bigger than, than the outlet park. So now let's talk about our strategy. So what makes us different than the rest of the developers on the market? We say we build destinations. And if you look at the slides here, this is one of the destinations. This is one of the projects we can see out from this window. Warsaw Brewery. This is really a mixed use coming of offices, residential, resident, there's retail, there's everything. This gives us advantage, diversification. We released brewery phase C of the residential apartment, 108 apartments. We released it Wednesday last week. Until today, we have already signed 96 reservations agreements. This shows what kind of interest there are for locations like this. This is really showing that people want to be part of something bigger, that it's just not an office complex or a residential complex or a retail shopping center. This is really how you change the market to be something new that it is not today. And this is what we're going to continue doing on Tovarova, on Betavena, in Krakow, in Woods, looking at more locations like this. Warsaw Brewery is around 4.6 hectares. The other plots are huge. There are hectare sites that we're buying around Poland. And we are buying them at prices that are average to what we have on a balance sheet already today. So by buying bigger areas, we can compete both of having a much attractive offer, but also buying it at the right prices per square meter. Here you see the buildings A, B, and C. And here you should remember that this building A is on level four or five. Building B or C are not even started yet. Which really shows what kind of interest there is on the market. And to give you even more interesting fact, from building A to building B, we increase prices with 10%. From building B to building C, we increase prices, prices with another 10% from building B. So it's not that we are not giving away money here. We're really optimizing the money we can get out of the project, but at the same time, we get a very good sales pace here, which means that our clients pay first advance payment, then they pay as construction goes on. So this is really a big part of EcoStrategy. And like I communicated before, and Valdi is going to continue talking about, we want to be 80% pre-sold in our residential part upon completion. We're also starting in q next year, building E. That's going to be the last of the residential buildings, and it's going to be the building you see here. After that, we have done all the four phases, 500 apartments. This is really interesting, and this is something we're going to continue doing in more locations. What you see here also is a rendering of the whole area. This is not a project. This is a new part of the city. 
This is really how we make Warsaw a nicer place. And we see a lot of interest also both from residential, from office tenant, and from retail to move into locations like this. Later on, we're going to come, uh, come back to what in the residential project, but we just now have started a building over here, and it's already 40% pre-leased to the first tenant. This is not anymore, like I said before, it's about a place where you both work, live, and entertain. This is not a place that's going to be open from 9 in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. This is something that you're going to be all around the clock. Which means it will be different from the areas that has been before in Warsaw. It's not like the Mokotov area. This will be different from the other projects in Volla. This is totally something new. And what is unique about this one is from Echo having all these competences in-house. We're the only developer that continue with this strategy. And this is also crucial for us as we have our construction business in-house in the company. And here you see the historical underground cellars that we're going to redevelop in a similar way as Halakashiki is done. So this is really going to be something new and something fresh in Warsaw. Here you see examples of uh, Betavena on Betavena Street, where it's going to be offices and residential in a location where the new fast tram is going to go out to Vilanov. You see Krakow Vitestrosa next to the railway station. You see Woods Timiskego, that is very similar to what we've done on the Warsaw Brewery, but just in a different shape and form. This is really things we believe in. In Krakow, we have proven really with a good safe space. In Woods, it's the areas where we see the biggest increases, both in offices in in residential. So we want to go into these cities with our strategy, being unique in what we're doing, and continue focusing on being different, but building what we believe is the future for this market. Thank you, Niklas. Thank you, Maciej. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's my first time here. I'm uh, in Echo from 1st of August. So for me, presenting today the results of, uh, um, of the performance of the company that I joined is a great privilege. At the same time, uh, the second day I joined ECHO, I realized uh, the challenge we have uh, as we are entering the new ECHO, I would say the new ECHO space. And the new ECHO space is related with the pace that we are developing the company and we are uh, making the journey incredible for our employees and for our customers. If you see those numbers, these are just the step-by-step -step growing numbers from year to year, from quarter to quarter. And the first observation that I had, uh, it was actually the 2nd of August, when I, met, when I met all the team, we realized the challenge we have in quarter three and quarter four. A lot of people were really facing the observation, you know, in the quarter four, we'll have tremendous job to deliver to the market, to our customers, ready-made projects. It means the apartments to be handed over, the apartments to be sold with the final agreement. And if you think historically, uh, up to the quarter three, uh, the handed, the handed, over, uh, handed over apartments, they were not impressive. When you think about 1,300 13, uh, apartments to be, to be sold and 1,000, almost 1,000, it was exactly described like a 925 apartments to be handed over. And we decided really to plan it accordingly to our the best knowledge and put team together. And if you think about quarter four, we started new projects to be really put on the market, but what is extremely important, we sold 400 apartments uh, in, uh, we, we plan to sell, to sell 400 apartments in quarter four, and already in o October, uh, we succeeded to do what you already observed on Brovary C, almost 100, uh, 150. What is impressive about uh, October, due to this great teamwork, we handed over more than 300 apartments to our customers. It means that we finished, we accomplished the apartments <coughs> with the quality that was expected by our customers, and it was the record month in the history of ECHO, really to make our customer to not only promise, but also to deliver this promise in reality. And with that being said, we are very positive about uh, year-end results, about uh, communicated before uh, 1,300 apartments to be sold and uh, 925 apartments to be handed over to our customers. And if you think about 2018, we start again the new projects in all our cities. 
we prepare our teams to make the job to make even more to make uh, not only the more about the numbers, but also use the experience that we have from the mixed projects for every residential project. Because what we want to do in residential, apart from the numbers that you can see here, they are growing step by step. Of course, we've got accumulation in quarter three, quarter four. This is also kind of a consequence of the timing of the construction, which gives us a certain reflection how to organize the teams. And uh, I think managerially, this is also the great exercise that we are doing today to create the winning teams which will be able to satisfy not only the, the numbers but the quality to the customers. Because imagine the customer who is not accepting uh, the apartment. They will not hand over, they will not accept to the apartment to be, uh, to be signed finally. And we succeeded that with the extremely demanding market to make happy customers to accept our offer and we strongly believe that this result will be achievable by the year end. What is really important for us for the next stages of residential uh, uh, business of ECHO, that we want to be, based on the experience of the mixed projects, even more concentrated how people will experience our projects, how people will feel with the projects like the apartments. We want to target uh, different segments of the, of, the, of the market. And with that being said, we want really to, uh, to, f to design the project in a way that they, they really suit to the requirements of our customers. We want to be much more agile, but at the same time, uh, our ambition is to find the customers in the projects like uh, Warsaw Brewery, like uh, Krakow Vita, with, the peop with people, with customers who really want to not only be there during the night, but also spend the morning uh, around the building, uh, maybe invite some friends to spend some time in the areas around the buildings. And what is extremely important for us that every project is giving us the experience for the next one. So we are exchanging the teams, we are trying to learn from one project to another to create the value and uh, just to propose better and better value to our customers. And those are just the bullet points, but those actions have already started, so you will see next year some of the examples of the real actions that will be implemented. So now it's time for the offices. What is important to highlight about our residential business, we have a very good pre-sale ratio. Out of the products we have on ongoing in residential, we have around 70% pre-sold. It really shows the interest we have on the residential market. It also shows that our strategy going from the high end to the popular segment is really paying off. Both, like Valik showed before, in volume, but what's important to look at here when you Go back to the slide here. We have done all this growth here, year on year, but we have not compromised on our margins. Because when you will look at your margins quarter on quarter, you will see that they are increasing. So it's really that we stick to the strategy we have about the profitable growth. We continue growing the business. We're growing it dramatically, both in handing over and in selling, but still keeping the margin that we have been communicating. Here you see about offices. In Q3, we have started the Betavena project, that is the newest project we started up in Warsaw. We have leased around 19,000 square meters, and we continue getting more money from the Q22 deal. As you know, the Q22 deal was closed uh, last year, but there was a price increase that should be paid up as we were leasing it up and handing over the space. And this is going according to the plan, and we continue handing over space, we continue leasing space. In Q4, we're going to uh, do commissioning of Symmetris. We have Opolska in uh, Krakow that we're going to do as well, phase two, and we're going to do a lot of lease agreements that we have in the pipeline now. So it's going to be a busy fourth quarter as well for the office part. But the biggest thing for the offices, a lot of the offices we have in our pipeline is already pre-agreed or pre-sold which means that we need to start up new products. So for next year, we have another seven products that we're gonna start up in Warsaw and in the regional cities. You also see we're gonna sell off four buildings where O3 is already pre-agreed, and most of them here are pre-agreed or in advanced negotiations. So what you see here is really the pipeline that we have ahead of us, and we really strongly believe is the way forward. Q22, it was sold to Invesco, 
the price was based on the vacancy we had at that time, because in December last year, many of our tenants has not moved in. They have moved in during this year, and we've seen we handed over a lot of the space. We continue handing over, and we have now another 11 million euros to be paid, which is clearly connected to the space that's left to be handed over. All the space in this building are under negotiation. So there's no vacancy in this building that we are not negotiating with and are planning to sign in the short future going forward. Uh, this has really been a good building based on the good profit we made a year ago when we sold off the building early during construction. We have during one year handed over a lot of space and now we see the last space being handed over and being leased. What we have left in the building to be leased, that we are leasing out now, is the lower floors. So all the higher floors are already pre-agreed and pre-leased and the other tenants. So what you see here is really what Ecofink is a school book example how we should do our buildings. We sell them early, we continue getting rent, and we continue getting the top of payments as we hand over the space to the tenants. Retail, it has been a busy quarter in retail. We completed the outlets, and I think a, month, a couple of weeks ago, we also handed over Galaxy in Stetchen. Really an extension that is really showing us with, that EPP is taking the role as the market leader in Stetchen. This is a beautiful product, and you really see the difference between the old Galaxy and the new Galaxy. With the new facade being replaced, and there's going to continue being more investment in this product. And I think this is also a good example of the cooperation between ECHO and EPP, where we really modernized the buildings that has been there for a couple of years, and now it needs some refreshment that we're doing. And if you see here, for Q4, we're going to get up to 85% pre-leased of Libero, 70% pre-leased of uh, Galleria Machini, and where Libero is opening on, on the first half of 2018, and Machini for the first half of 2019. So it's really good figures you see here. We are way before opening of Libero, and we are 85% pre-leased. Really shows the interest, and you see now on a Almost on a weekly basis, we announced the new leases that we're signing up with and building. And we continue the zoning process of Tovarova, where we're going well forward with the city. As we have announced before, we have a little while with the city. We continue moving forward. This is really going to be a new part of the brewery. Here you see the examples of the new extension of Galaxy. We see totally how we have redone the facades. It's much more double levels. It really shows what you can do. And in Q4, we expected another 10 million euros to be paid for a top of payment for the extension of Galaxy. And when we handed it over, 100% was leased day one. So there was no vacancy whatsoever in that retail complex. Acquisitions. The land market has been hot during this year. And as many of you have asked before, how are you buying and to what prices are you buying? We have bought so far 420,000 square meters of space to be leased out or sold out. We have bought it at the prices you see here that we are announcing on the different levels of the office and residential. Retail, we have not acquired anything more than machine that was acquired as a ready product to start. What you see here, we are acquiring it at very attractive pricing. We have also in these prices acquired land in Warsaw for residential. So this is really showing us that with the right strategy, adopting a different strategy than your competitors, you can continue buying even if the market is hot. And this is totally different figures than you would see from many of our competitors that are buying single-use products where you need to pay much more than we are paying by buying our different strategy. We need to fill up with this amount of land every year. Because uh, today, Echo has slightly above a million square meters ongoing. And to take that in comparison, from Echo was founded in 97 until today, we have totally done 1.3 million square meters. 
So we almost have the last 20 years of production under protection as we speak now. And out of that pipeline, we have a very high pre-lease or pre-sold ratio, which is really showing that we also, we don't only grow a business to growing it profitably, we also take care that we have the right uh, leasing level and selling level in all our products. And here you see what we have under negotiation for another 200,000 square meters, where uh, part of this will be closed this year, other part will be closed next year. For a big company like Echo now, we have been growing so quickly. We are taking on another 100 people every year into the organization. It's crucial for us to have the values that we stand behind. And now we have put in another independent board member into this uh, audit committee and the supervisory board. We are continuing limiting the amount of uh, exceptions we're having from the rules of Warsaw Stock Exchange, where our clear target is to be fully compliant and we're working full speed on making sure that we go to that direction. We have implemented a code of conduct. So all the people in the organization have signed a clear code of conduct document and we have a clear whistleblower policy and we're now setting up our own internal audit function. This is all to be compliant with the Warsaw Stock Exchange, but also this is the right way for us to run a company going forward. We need to have strong values that everybody in the company stand behind, and that's the way to continue growing this business successfully. Because we bent, uh, 100 people doesn't sound like a lot, but it's still another 25% of the people joining us every year. So that's why it's so crucial to keep the values that we're having and continue building on those values. One of our strongest values is health and safety. Me as the CEO of this company want all our people to come home safe from their works every day. Because we have 70 products, and if you assume that on them there are roughly 200 people on each one of the products, it's a lot of people that we employ on all our products at a given point. All these people need to be safe. All these people need to come home from work safe every day. That's one of our strongest values here as well. In the construction industry, we need to continue focusing on making sure that people come home safe. And that's why we in ECHO, as we do construction management, we have strong demands on our contractors to fulfill the safety regulations. And this is, I really think, that is something that makes us proud and makes the company proud to continue working on. So everybody employee in ECHO go through the health and safety training, I will take to the management team for intensive health and safety training next year. When you will come up and visit our site, you will show really that how we do an introduction for you, how you will get all your personal protection, and to go out and see your products. Because the product, it's the 70 products around Poland where we make our money. This is really the core of Echo's business. Thank you. Now let's continue with financial highlights. We already you know, mentioned the results um, in terms of profit and loss, um, and we've mentioned the excellent outlook for entire 2000, 2017. So let's look at our balance sheet. Uh, firstly, I think you, you will easily notice that our um, the, 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 the balance sheet number that grows uh, very significantly is uh, <coughs> commercial and residential projects under construction. That we have almost 70% growth uh, compared to end of last year in terms of value of this, of this balance sheet uh, position. And this is, of course, how we want to drive our business. Uh, you will almost uh, you know, not see investment properties. And, and I would like to remind you that, as Niklas said, our strategy is to sell properties when they are still under construction, like we sold Q22. So uh, we... we sell as soon as we can, and we manage uh, this part of, of the balance sheet, you know, with the utmost um, um, uh, care. I would also like to look at the uh, other side of the balance sheet, so our, our liabilities. Uh, the growth was much smaller than the growth uh, of our asset, uh, I mean, this asset position um, uh, being, um, you know, asset under construction, so it's around 45%. Uh, I would like to uh, focus on this a little bit uh, because th that's very important, how we want to manage you know, that looking forward. Um, 
what is very important is that uh, we use, um, you know, for debt financing, we use mainly the, the bond market, both public bonds and the bonds that we sell to, to the funds. Historically, our maturities were uh, maximum four years, and we also had some issues uh, less than three years uh, maturity. Uh, now, we starting from this year, we introduced a five-year bond on the terms which are, in terms of margin, not worse than, than a four-year bond previously. And this is how we want to, to manage you know, our liabilities. We simply want an you know, um, amount of debt maturing in any given year to be similar uh, to what we had in the past. Uh, so not creating additional, uh, additional exposure. And this is what, what, what is happening. So we closed uh, 200 million of public bond issue. Uh, we received funds in, in Q4, and that was for five years with 2.9% margin. So we are, we are very happy from, uh, from uh, how this market works for us and will continue to do that. Uh, our net debt level uh, at the end of the quarter is around uh, 30%, and this is indeed you know, how we want to keep it between 30 to 40% uh, net debt to assets. Uh, the covenant in the bonds is 65%, but of course it's not terribly relevant. Uh, we are very far from that, and our internal policy is to be between 30 and 40%. Uh, let's look you know, in more detail on our asset side, because I, I mentioned that we are selling assets under construction early, and this is um, a breakdown. So we, uh, at the end of third uh, quarter, we had almost 350,000 square meters under construction. And you can see here this, you know, broken down between different projects and different types of arrangements that we have uh, wi with uh, different um, off-takers. So, uh, you know, starting from, from this part, you know, going clockwise, Galaxy extensions that we did for EPP, it was not on our balance sheet, uh, forward sale of Westlink, forward sale of Sagittarius, forward sale of uh, three other buildings to EPP. So uh, these are agreements that are, you know, fully binding notarial deed form of agreements. Uh, so this exit is absolutely secure. Then we have residential buildings, and as Niklas mentioned, we continue to increase <coughs> our pre-sale ratio. And actually, you know, today in the fourth quarter, we are closer to 70% of pre-sale. Um, then we have two, uh, two types of, of ROFO agreements. Uh, just to remind you, these are agreements that we have with um, entities that invested uh, in our projects, 25% of equity. And they also have a right to make us an offer to acquire, you know, these projects when they are complete. So we have also a sort of default bias for these projects, but again, to remind you, we are not limited by that, meaning we can also sell to the market uh, if the price is more attractive. And here, uh, the last part of, of this circle is uh, our JV with uh, EPP on Mochine project. Uh, so here, of course, it's also you know, very important for us to continue to work with EPP in this form and with other um, potentially other, um, other partners to work in the form of JV on very large projects. Uh, so just to focus a little bit on that, uh, this is a project uh, of 80,000 square meters shopping center in Warsaw, and it's, it's a very, very big project, so equity ticket uh, would be huge. Um, we manage uh, these projects in a slightly different way, meaning we enter into JV agreements and we are earning development fee uh, for our services as developer. So for managing, you know, construction, managing leasing, etc., etc. And this is the way for us to work on very big projects with a limited equity exposure, which is very important for us. Uh, another way of looking at our assets is to focus on, on the liquidity aspect, meaning, you know, how quickly we can turn these assets into into cash, so starting from cash, trade receivables, uh, restricted cash, plots for sale, EPP shares, you know, all these assets are uh, convertible into cash uh, in a relatively short period of time. 
We have investment properties which are in the process of, of marketing, so they will also be uh, sold shortly. We have residential projects, and as it was already said, they are very highly pre-sold, and we are converting a lot of them into, into profits and, and cash uh, quickly now. We have commercial projects under construction, and as I explained you know, on the previous slide, they are basically contracted. So if you look just one by one, you know, we have a final forward sale agreement for the first project, which is O3 Business Campus. Uh, Symmetry, Sagittarius, and Westlink, they are also under agreement, and they are all to be sold either in Q4 or uh, early next year. And then we have Galleria Libero, this is a shopping center in Katowice that will be opened uh, next year. And uh, we are sure that it will also be uh, you know, very much in demand uh, from, from the buyers. Um, so you know, looking at our assets, uh, you can really see that um, our liquidity uh, you know, profile is excellent. Um, debt maturity, um, as I mentioned, we are you know, right now issuing debt with five-year maturity, so meaning that if we issue this year, uh, in 2017, the maturity will be in 2022. You don't even you know, um, see a lot of, of that here. Um, the, the debt that is maturing next year is already taken care of, meaning that uh, we uh, did issue uh, in Q4 uh, this year uh, retail bonds, for 200 million, uh, we are close to issuing uh, 150 million of bonds sellable to funds. Uh, so the amount uh, that we will still need to be, um, that we still need to refinance, you know, early next year, uh, is around 150 million. So in the in the current market environment, uh, the the process of uh, of, of selling these amounts uh, is uh, extremely quick. And as I mentioned uh, before, uh, for, by way of example, uh, retail bonds uh, that, that we did issue uh, this year uh, in the amount of 300 million in free tranches uh, sold in one day, uh, or almost one day each time. So uh, this market uh, is, you know, is uh, extremely favorable and we'll continue to use that and we indeed plan to uh, to uh, start a new uh, retail uh, bond program in 2018. So uh, simply not to, uh, not to obviously not to reduce our indebtedness, but to keep it uh, at least at the level uh, that we currently have. Um, our dividend policy is uh, just a reminder. Uh, we did declare that we are going to pay 50 groschen per share in respect of profits uh, earned in 2017. So uh, that's uh, obviously uh, something that we are going to do. Uh, that's a dividend, again, to remind you, coming from operating profit. So uh, from our operating activities, and, uh, and this is not uh, something that overlaps with any dividend coming from asset sale that we did in the past, which is still um, very much um, possible. Uh, I would li also like to, to, remind, uh, to remind you that we had um, a change in the shareholder base that happened recently. Um, so uh, we still have our majority shareholders being PIMCO, Oak Tree and Griffin um, that own 56% of our capital, but we have around 10% of new shareholders that came to AHO, and of course we welcome them uh, warmly. Uh, these are shareholders uh, both from Poland and international investors. We spent with Niklas um, a good amount of time recently um, introducing ECHO to a number of in international um, investors, and we'll continue to do that uh, because we, we strongly believe that uh, expanding you know, shareholder base is improving liquidity of our shares, uh, cost of capital long term, uh, and availability you know, of, of capital. And clearly, our, we expect that our market, market valuation will also be more stable as a result of more diverse shareholder base. Um, clearly, 
as a process, as a part of this process, uh, Niklas and I uh, acquired also shares in the company on the same terms as you know as uh, new investors. Um, so um, we will, of course, uh, keep these shares uh, because we are <laughs> long term. Uh, appendix. Uh, this is something uh, that we uh, did already uh, when we published results for H1. So uh, I would like to uh, to draw your attention to the fact that we publish very detailed project data. So uh, if you if you would like to uh, to look at the dates of the projects, you know projects locations, uh, cost of the project, both expected and spent, uh, operating income, uh, and you know lots of project metrics, um, you you have uh, our view and you have our expectations and targets expressed in the appendix in great detail uh, for projects, uh, you know, starting from, from office, retail, and residential. Uh, so uh, this is, of course, to improve transparency. And we also mentioned projects that are in early stage, still not allocated to sectors. But as Niklas mentioned, these are projects that are usually destinations, like Wojtyminickiego. It's a destination project, so it will be mixed use as, as soon as it goes into into preparation <laughs> phase. Uh, we will move it to you know to upper parts, so you will have more details on that. Yeah, and then definitions, obviously. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. Now there is a time for uh, Q and A questions. So if you have any question, uh, just uh, one request to, to ask them to the microphone. Uh, it's Krzysztof Kubiszewski from Trigon. Uh, so my first question is, uh, how do you expect the galleries or retail NOI will change after uh, the Free Sunday legislative? It's not an easy question for us to answer how it will change. Uh, many other markets, you will see that it has changed. There is more shopping happening on Saturdays than during the week instead. Uh, how it will change in Poland, it's very difficult to say. Uh, for us, going into the new centers that we're developing uh, jointly with VPP, we put much more focus on food and entertainment and how we will make sure that part of this business is growing much more. Uh, the Sundays, we think it will even out during the rest of the weeks. Uh, there will certain groups of uh, shopping centers that will be more effective than others, uh, where we have seen it more affecting the outlets that have much more traffic during Saturday Sundays than the traditional centers that will still have the same flow during the weekdays and it will move much more to Saturdays. Um, we have the two locations that we're doing, which is Muschini Libero, that we're really focusing on that one, and we're really seeing how we will make sure that we adopt the mix of tenants and the food and entertainment, so we really can attract as wide tenant base as possible. But to answer you back your questions, it will affect certain centers more than others, and we think the centers we're developing, it will be moved more evenly over the week instead of hitting the Sundays. Okay. And do you plan the sell-off of EPP shares, the remaining EPP shares? Uh, like we said before, it had the old assets held for sale where we put it uh, in uh, Q2 last year. So by Q2 next year, according to book review rules, we will sell them off of our balance sheet. By 2008? 2018. 18. And how uh, do you explain this different approach to buying land than the others? Because I don't fully understand this. If we compare us with the most, most of the other developers, they are either doing offices, or they're doing residential, or they're doing retail. None of them do all the three functions in one, as we're doing. In my previous employment, uh, I could buy anything I wanted as long as it was offices. But when it was not offices, I was restricted. When you come to Echo, we have a unique competence of having three different business lines that can really look into the different functions. And also on top of that, you have a residential for rent business and you have a student housing business that is started up on top of that. 
and residential for rent and student housing, you can put in locations where you can not put other uses. Which means that we can go much quicker in and out of one area, like the Warsaw Brewery, we will be, from we start in building until we leave it, it will be three to four years. If you're going to do it as a single use, you need maybe five to ten years to go in and out of that location. And we get a much more effective use of that area, we get a much better tenant mix, and also, what we are saying as well, if you specialize in one area, it's much more difficult for you to price the residential and the retail if you're purely an office developer. So that's why I say it's, it's much more difficult to, for any other to copy that strategy, where you see many of the other developers are trying to do offices and residential, but in a much smaller scale than we're doing, because usually you do a couple of hundreds. We are doing now close to 1,500 per year. So we are on the top seven developers in Poland. So we really come up to the leading position in all three segments. And also putting additional square meters and everything makes, we get much more effective use. We go quicker in and out of locations. We get much more of a city builder that the city authorities like. And we create areas that are alive 24 seven. They are not alive just between nine to six. So basically the split uh, on the slide 21 where you show the residential's office are, b are basically sometimes on the same uh, land plot, yes? Uh, they are on the same land plot, and uh, we usually buy them as one big land plot, and then after what you divide it later on. Because once you design that area, there can be some historical buildings, there can be other buildings that you want to use in a certain area. And if you look at the Warsaw Brewery, it's really a vision that people buy into. There are so many three, four different squares the public areas that we're creating. We're doing so much more than just a building. It's really a new way of living and shopping and entertainment and really, this is the new way we see going forward and you have seen it in many other Western European markets that this trend has been coming much more further. What is unique about Poland is in many other global cities you don't find a five hectare site in the city center that you can buy. Thanks. Oh, Maria Mickiewicz Pakao. Also referring to those land plot purchases, uh, first question would be uh, this land plot in residential in Warsaw. Could you disclose what's the specific location of this plot in Warsaw? Because I think it was acquisition in, in the third quarter, right? I think it's announced in um, the appendixes. Well, you should have the. Uh, you have it on the page number 37. On the second, second line on page 37. Third. Third. Yeah. So it's a big area that we're buying in an established residential area uh, where you see many other developers being present. It's a plot that we can develop between 800 to 1,000 apartments on. And this is purely, purely residential? It's going to be a mix uh, of residential and residential for rent in this kind of location, because we believe in the mix. And also, if you have 800 to 1,000 apartments, it, it's not something you go in and out in three years. You need a longer period of time. That's why we say it's much better we sell off part of the plot early, and then we get cash, and then we can continue doing and buying more locations. But it will not be a mixed use that there will be offices. It's purely residential in the area of residential for sale and residential for rent. Okay, thank you. And uh, one more question also regarding residential. Uh, I mean, the third quarter profitability of the segment. Uh, I think it was around 23%, the gross margin. And the question would be whether this profitability uh, was, I don't know, kind of still diluted by, by recognition of older projects, or this is uh, your target gross profitability in the residential segment, what should we expect in 2018? Right. Uh, well, I, I, I think our uh, uh, targets are 30-40% on cost, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, if you, if you translate this um, um, into prof margin on, on sales, right, which you refer mm -hmm. to, it's, it's, it's not far. So, it's, it's a lower range of our target, right? I mean, 30%, because we, in third quarter, we were, you know, 30% profit on cost level and and this is a lower end of our target for resi right mm -hmm. and uh, clearly you know in resi uh, you, you you can see you know if you look because we are disclosing you know this this de uh, project level data 
uh, you, you can see that the profitability of projects varies a lot. So it, it depends which exactly projects you are selling because you're, you know, you, you have a lot of, of variability in, in, in the mix, right? So I think uh, I would leave it at that, right? So we, we, we say, okay, this, this is the lower end of our target. It's first point. Second, there will be a lot of variability. And third, uh, I would like to refer you to the project level data that we have in the appendix because they express basically our expectations. And, um, and uh, clearly, of course, um, we do see a, a pressure on uh, construction costs, but I think we manage this very well. I don't know, Niklas, if you want to, to add something. Uh, I also think that, uh, looking from our perspective, we are very proud being a profit on cost on 30% in a cash negative business. It's, I think very few other developers can deliver that kind of returns. And what we've seen is there has been a cost increase on the construction cost, but we, have, we are now slowly to seeing the increases on the prices level as well, on the sales prices. We have been managing to keeping our cost under control by having a construction management function inside the company. So we really have lowered the uh, increase compared to many other, other competitors, but we have still seen the increase. And what we're seeing now is that we also see an increase in sales prices. Uh, keeping all this in mind, you should also see on the slides that we have a very high pre-sale ratio. So we have a very low risk in our business and we're selling very quickly. And of course, that has also an effect on the margin. But if we stay in the range between 30 to 40 percent with our business model, we are very satisfied. Okay, thank you. And like last question from my side, uh, looking at the example of uh, Bravare, uh, you showed that you managed to increase the prices uh, between two stages, uh, once by 10 percent, and and then again by 10 percent, which is impressive, I would say. Uh, but if you could disclose uh, what was the, the cost pressure between those stages as well? Um, the cost pressure was caused, the prices increased between the phases for construction, mm -hmm. but there was clearly a margin increase as well. So you will see in the annexes, you will see exactly the margin increase, but the, your, to refer to your question, my increase in sales price was higher than my cost base was increasing at the same time. So I was making more money on face by face. And uh, also, it's uh, always easy to say that we are selling too quick or selling too slow. Nobody has found the optimal way of selling. Um, but if you still remember, we have sold close to 400 apartments in less than a year, and we have got advances paid. So we are really putting that area on the map. And when you have a momentum like we're having now, when you have people outside saying, we really want to buy, and we have increased the prices by 10%, and in a week you sign 100 reservation agreements, it really shows what we're doing. But the margin of, of projects like this is not in the, uh, the level of 30 to 40 percent. That is 50 and above what we're making on projects like this. I'm asking because uh, your competitors are pointing at uh, even up to 10 percent uh, upward pressure on the construction costs on a year-on-year basis. Uh, so uh, you're holding an internal uh, general contracting arm. Uh, so the question is, uh, does it help you to, to uh, keep this uh, cost pressure uh, more limited uh, than the average for the market? Uh, we are keeping it more limited than the average on the market, and that's for two reasons. The average on the market uses general contracting. That means that you tie up the contractor for uh, 18 to 24 months that they need to guarantee a price for. We do it in packages, that it's a much shorter time span of two to six months that they need to agree for the pricing, which is much easier for them to see the cost they're having ahead of them. And we divide it in bigger volumes. As we have 70 products, we tender out multiple products at the same time, which means that we can buy, in many equipment, we buy directly from the factories. Because we have such a big volume, so we can go directly to the factories. We cut all the middle layers in between, which also makes that we don't see the same price increases. But uh, we have seen price increases. We have not seen them 10% or above. We are now also working clearly to define our products. We really know what we're building, how can we standardize it, how can we make sure that we get it up in bigger volumes. And as late as last night, me and Valdek was having a meeting with one of the biggest suppliers of uh, one of the products that we use in many of our buildings and discussing how can we go directly to the factory and buy. And how can we standardize it in a much more better way than we're doing today? But we are in the beginning of this journey. We still would develop much more. Uh, 
Last year I was talking about we decreased the construction cost with 15% from the year be of before. We are not seeing that that we continue decreasing. The, we see a slow increase, but not something that we are not having under control in our business. What we have seen is, lead back to your question, what we looked out, because if the prices in the general market increase with 10%, it should have some effect also on the top line selling prices in residential that we have not seen yet, but we're slowly seeing it coming up now. Okay, thank you. So there is uh, a question from one of uh, the participants that are with us online. Uh, this regards to the residential market and our, uh, our view uh, on the residential mar market for another few years, uh, if we see any uh, signs of uh, coming crisis. It's always very difficult to, to answer the question what the future will like. But what we can see, if we compare it to the old crisis, you saw so a massive top line increase in sales prices. You saw debt levels was much higher. You saw the banks have a much higher leverage than we're having today. Today, we have much more restrictive banks. We have much more cash that are buying from apartments. We have not seen a massive increase of rental growth. And we still, if you look at Poland, the amount of people that are moving away from home into their first home or second home is still a dramatic figure that is seeing that there was, I was looking at a figure about, according to Eurostat, what is the amount of overcrowded households in Poland, according to definition, that is how many people live per room in an apartment. And I think over 42%, according to that definition of the Polish market, was living in overcrowded households. So what we see, we think there will be a lot of people that needs to move we have moved down from the top end of the segment to the popular segment, where there always is a demand for apartments. We are, of course, hatching us what will be ahead of us by having a big pre-sale ratio in the ongoing projects, and we continue having that one. So we are always aware that there could be a crisis coming ahead of us. We are not something that we are really that our number one priority today, but we are always hatching our batch, we're looking what's ahead of us, and we focus on sticking to our strategy. Today, what we are focusing a lot is how do we make sure that our price increases are higher than what we have in cost increases on the construction side. And going forward now, we will continue to focus on, on the residential segment. We will focus on the market where we are, and we see a strong demand going forward. Many of the market that's been hit with some kind of crisis has been that there's been built too many apartments in the top end of the segment. And that's a little bit what uh, my country, Sweden, is struggling from today, that there was built too many apartments that was in the top end, and too few that are in the affordable segment for the everyday Pole or Swede to buy. And that's in the segment that we are and that we want to continue staying in. There are another questions that are still uh, related to resi market. If we could uh, describe where is the demand from coming, what type of buyers, first time local international investors, are you able to disclose this? Uh, if you look at it, it's for a different market. If you will say, if you look at the Warsaw market and you look at the Krakow market, you will see there's much more investors buying. And by investors, I mean Polish people buying, investing their own money into apartments. So it's Polish private individuals that then are buying to then rent it out from them. And that you see in, mainly in Warsaw and in Krakow. And that figure can be as high as up to 20 to 30% in some of our products. We don't see any in international investors going and buying big bulks of apartments. In any of our products, we don't sell more than two apartments to one single individual, because that's not what we're targeting for. In other markets in regional cities, we see much more of people who are buying who wants to live there. So it's like the end consumer that are buying there. We also see in markets like Wroclaw and Poznan, where we do much more in this MDM program, that is supported by the government, where we're doing uh, apartments that are for people that get some subsidies to live there. So it's a different segment, but we don't see a speculative market where people <coughs> buy bulks of apartments that they don't want to live in, that they can rent out going forward. The rental market is in Warsaw and in Krakow, where we buy, sell to individuals that are going to lease out their apartments so as rental apartments. But we never sell more than two apartments to the same person to avoid that kind of risk in our products. Two questions regarding to the price increase on Q22. Uh, the first one, 
is the anticipated payment of uh, 11 million euro related to the decrease in vacancy from 18 to 8 percent today and the second question out of the local of the total uh, 225 million of gross profit from revaluation how much was delivered from q22 well i i believe we are we are not disclosing you know individual uh, numbers uh, so far, right, for revaluation. So, so this I, I can't really answer. Uh, what we, we are considering whether we should do that, but not this time. Uh, uh, sorry. In respect of of a, a, a price increase, I think it's it's partly for what already happened because we basically get the payment uh, twice a year. So, um, so um, I mean, in respect of price increase, so it's it's partly this 11 million is partly in respect of what has already happened and partly what is still uh, ongoing, right? Uh, it, it's a full amount uh, to be paid uh, once the vacancy is reduced to zero. But as Niklas said, we, we are confident uh, that uh, it's a short-term process because uh, the negotiations are advanced. Uh, so uh, we should uh, definitely complete this process within 2018. Are there any another question? Okay, so let's finish with one another question from uh, our watchers. And this is, um, if we could say something about construction prices, could you please share with us the percentage it, uh, increase you observe in overall construction cost rather than the qualitative comment to you made before? You have to look at that uh, product by product uh, basis uh, if you're going to get it, uh, the cost increases. And then it always is, uh, are you comparing it to last year or comparing it to this year? What we will say, compared to our budget, we are sticking to our budget that we had from last year. So, and if we're going to see a cost increase that we will see on our product, it will be in the span between zero to five percent is in the range that we will see. And why I say between zero to five, it's always how good we are in defining our product, how much we have uh, worked on it before, and also how much we've been able to standardize. And I think going forward, uh, we will be in the lower span between zero to five going forward based on that we are much, much better today to define our product, to buy much more from the factory than we have done historically. So we're cutting all the layers in between us and the manufacturer of the product. And that's why I would say that we are in the range between zero to five, and some of our competitors are at much higher figures. Are there any other questions? Then it looks like the presentation was effective. Uh, thank you very much for, for visiting us this time. Uh, you are, of course, welcome to uh, ask the question after. Uh, and there is a coffee and tea for you prepared. Thank you very much. <laughs>